All right, guys, welcome back to another video here on the Infinity Game Table. And, uh, man, this has actually been a hassle to get to this point. Uh, I've been really behind with showing you guys the latest releases on the Infinity Game Table. And, uh, you know, I still love the Infinity Game Table. Like I said, I've talked about for a while, I'm a big board game person, and they have some unique board games on here that I really like, um, even if they haven't released a lot of good stuff over the last year. Uh, with the exception of one studio that we're going to be talking about today that's kind of holding the fort for them right now. But, um, you know, I, th there was a big reason for that. Uh, in the beginning, it was because I was just busy doing other projects. But then after that, you know, I turned this on a couple of weeks ago, and I was like, all right, I'm finally going to get these new releases out for you guys. And my Infinity Game Table was broken. Uh, it wouldn't. It would turn on and it would be fine, but the uh, touch screen was just not working on the Infinity Game Table. Like it would, I wouldn't even be able to see how. Like I'm on the main menu right now and I can scroll, like up and down. Uh, I couldn't even do that because every time I tried to scroll, it would think that I was touching the sc like touching an icon and it would open that game. And everything that I tried to press while playing games, it would take two or three taps half the time. The touchscreen sensor was obviously not working. I know that some people have talked about having that issue and then they unplug it from the wall and, and pull the power and that's how they got it to work. I have tried everything. I tried it on battery. I tried it on the electricity. Uh, I unplugged it while it was on. All the stuff that you could possibly try, it did not work. So my only choice if I wanted to continue making these videos for you guys is basically get a new table. So we have a new 32 inch table here. Uh, that we're working with. I am selling my uh, my little game board, uh, even though I do like that thing. You know, it's obviously redundant, and uh, you know, I made the reviews for that a while ago. On, on telling you guys what I think about that, I still think it's a good option. But um, you know, if I had to pick one, I would definitely keep the 32 inch. Uh, you know, because bigger is better in this case for board games. So that one is up for sale, and uh, I got a new one here. And, uh, yeah, now I can make these videos for you guys. So, today we got a couple of video, uh, a few games that we need to talk about. Of course, they came out with Jeopardy, which is a huge deal. Uh, they came out with Gremlins Grotto, and then Stack as well. So, we're going to talk about a few games here. So, let's go ahead and get into the video. Gaming tech, eating brekkie is the gaming tech. Going for a brekkie is the gaming tech. Gaming tech is the gaming tech. Gaming tech is all right, guys, so the first game I wanted to talk to you guys about is Stack here, and this is, again, from Sto Squiggly Frog Studios. In my opinion, this is the company that's kind of holding it down, uh, or the studio that they partnered with that's kind of holding down the floor on, on, on the games on this table. Uh, they have released a lot of a, a few other games as well that I've talked about on this channel before, but they continue to do great work on this table and really showcase what it is to make a specific game for the Infinity Game Table that takes advantage of their features and they, you know, have creative games that, you know, are kind of hinting at other games that obviously exist in the board game world but putting their own spin on it, and I think it's great. Um, as you guys are looking at here, uh, there are options here that you have. You have your how to play. You can turn off a bunch of things, the vibration, the volume. Go ahead and raise this up a little bit. Um, you have the credits right there. They have their game stats as well, which is awesome. That keeps track of all the games that you play and how many times that you won. Uh, these are their other games that I was talking about as well. Uh, and Actually, if you click on this, you will actually see like what's coming up next for them. Uh, as you can see here, this is in testing. Rolling Bones, so I'm excited to see what that's going to be like. Gremlins Grotto is the other one we're going to talk about, which is also from them. Uh, they also have another one here in testing, Opanico. Uh, that cribbage game that we reviewed on this channel is also from them. Cashflow was from them. Uh, so those games were, have all been from them, and, they, and they've done a great job uh, with all of those. This is the how to play area, which essentially shows you how to actually play the game. Uh, for example, in this one here, to win, obviously, is the objective. The object of the game is to play all your cards in your draw pile in sequential order on the four stacks in the center of the table. Of course, it's not that simple, so gather your friends, read the rules quick, and blow through those draw piles to claim victory. And then it kind of goes through the setup. Each player in the game will be dealt a stack of cards, the number of which can vary based on the game options. Next to the draw pile, each player has four discard piles. In the center of the board is where the remaining decks are. Place face down, this is the main draw pile. Next to this draw pile are four stacks where you will play your cards. Each stack has a label to see what what the next card is. This will help you on what wilds are. This helps when wilds are played, so you can see exactly what cards are going to be coming up. 
On your turn, you will be dealt cards until you have a hand of five. Firstly, you want to play cards in the draw pile before any others, followed by those in your hand, and then lastly, in your discard piles. Looking at the four stacks in the center, see if you can play any of your cards, and if you can, drag it into your, drag it into that stack. If there are no cards on that stack, you can start a new stack uh, or a wild card as you play cards. If you manage to play all your cards in your hand, you will be dealt five cards so that you can continue playing. Uh, a note in your discard piles, you can place any card in your discard part, but you can only play the top card. Uh, this is very reminiscent of games like uh, Phase 10 and stuff like that. If you guys have played games like that, that's kind of what this game is kind of going for. Uh, as you can see here, we can go ahead and hit start. And then up to four people can kind of join. You just go ahead and tap to join. Really like that you can always name your players. They do that for all their games. You could just do random. Or you can actually pop this up and edit this in. And uh, we can go ahead and backspace out of here and just hit enter. And you can also turn this into AI. So we're going to add another person here. And AI can be played in this game, which is awesome. Uh, you can play up to four players, a mix of AI or real people. And then, of course, you can hit begin game. And then it hands out the cards here. And then you obviously play the game that it was talking about as you try to play your hand and, you know, try to... Uh, play the stacks in front of you. You can see the next one is one. Uh, you can see all three of these are wild. So this one here, I can go ahead and play right here and play it right there. See, I actually tried to play this game before uh, on the old Infinity game table that I had, which is why it shows I've never played this game before on this one. But um, I couldn't even drag the card from here to here because it kept dropping the card because it kept thinking I wasn't dragging anything. Like I said, it was just all messed up. But uh, yeah. Definitely not a, a, a fun time as, as far as how that was working. So I could play a wild over here as my two if I want to. I could play this whole entire stack because I could do all three wilds. Four, five, and then six. Or actually, I guess I can't play that. Oh, you can only play five cards. That's right. And then you have to play one in your discard pile, actually. So your turn ends. And then the AI goes, and then you're going back and forth, and you're trying to get rid of your hand... Uh, like it talks about here, uh, if you can play cards in the center, you do. You can see the next cards that are coming up. Uh, so you can see I could play a five. Uh, and then what it's looking for is a six. So I can go ahead and play this here, for example. Uh, the next card is a seven. We don't have that. I can get rid of this card. Or you can start a new stack if you want to, but it has to be with a wild um, but yeah, you, you do this and you're trying to get rid of your hand before the other player. So really cool game. Like I said, it reminds me of games like phase 10 and stuff like that, that you actually get to play on here. Um, so this first game is cool. Again, squiggly studios does a great job with their games. We're going to go ahead and exit here and go back to the, uh, main menu here, but really, really cool stuff. Uh, from them as usual. The next game we're going to talk about is also from them, which is Gremlins Grotto. Uh, this is again, another game from them and this is a tile laying game. Uh, so each one of their games always has like a unique idea, which I think is is super cool. That kind of goes hard into like what the board game world has. Like a lot of board games, you know, talk about tile laying games and stuff like that. You got the card game that we just played that's kind of like Phase 10. This one's about all those tile laying games that we know, but with their unique spin. So this one here has really fantastic looking graphics with the gems and stuff like that. Again, the same idea. Actually, let me go back and show you the main menu uh, before we actually go into here because they, they always have like their options and stuff in there. But... Love the way that they introduce the game and these stylized graphics, but then you can go ahead and hit settings, and then you have their options here. Again, they do a great job with this. They have their how to play, their game options on this one. So if you want to turn all, look at all the different options you have in this game, how long you want the game to be, the length of the spell that you want it to be, initial draws, uh, skipping the animation, all of those are kind of there. We'll leave that for default for now. It also has, um, you know, how to play and all that kinds of stuff on here. So really, really awesome stuff. Uh, you know, that's in here. And it has the same features here where you can go ahead and join if you want to um, with up to four players, just like before. This one does not have, unfortunately, AI play. Uh, this one it is only uh, real players because of the tile laying. It's probably a little complicated to make AI. So they went with um, this specific game. I think the only one I played from them that doesn't have AI. But uh, so we're going to just control two players to show you guys, you know, what's going on here. But it, it, it's essentially a tile laying game where you're trying to get rid of your tiles and, and get the most amount of points while laying those tiles, um, depending on how many in a row you actually do. So you guys will see here, you got your little gremlins there in the corner. Uh, you have 15 rounds as it shows. Again, I love the animations and stuff that these guys do in their game. You can see the boards kind of moving around and stuff. It, it just makes the game more fun. They do a great job with... Uh, 
you know, with their games on the Infinity game table, it's taking advantage of what it does. It uses the vibration and all that kinds of stuff, and the graphics, you know, definitely stand out on their games. Uh, they're not just basic looking. They make it more inviting and fun to play when you when you have, you know, if this was just a regular tile laying game that didn't have the cool gems and the cool monsters and stuff, it wouldn't be as fun or interesting to look at. But it is because they did a good job with that stuff. Um, so here you can play up to five tiles, and you're basically trying to match them uh, on the board. So if I go ahead and hit this here, you can see that I can place that there and place the tile over there, and you're basically trying to make a line or a row as long as possible um, to get the most amount of points. So you can see here, I need a three on this side, a 10. So I can go ahead and hit this 10 right here. I can play that 10 here. You can see the numbers that are coming up on the side that you're looking for. Uh, you want to be able to make a long, the straightest line as possible. So you can't like zigzag and stuff. It's not going to give you as many points here. And it looks like I don't think I have anything else that, uh, would give me a longer line. So you can just say I played two and then the next person would go, for example, and, uh, you know, the board switches over and then this person now has to do the exact same thing. You can see, obviously, my name is down here, it tells you whose turn it is. And then it's your game. It's your turn. It's going to shuffle the tiles and it's going to give you the tiles that you need to draw at the beginning of your turn. And then it's your job to try and continue this and try to make it again as as long as you possibly can. And uh, looking around the board here, uh, we don't have a great amount of options here um, to be able to do what we want to do. Um, but we can play this tile here, for example, and again, you're trying to get as many points. You can see the points going up as you're playing them, uh, the points that are worth on the thing. And then of course the longer line, you're also going to get points for that as well. Uh, we can play this one right here. Uh, let's see. Oh, actually we could make a pretty long one. We got this five over here too. So that was a pretty good run. And then, uh, of course, you can start your own line as well if you want to. You don't have to keep going on just his. But, uh, but yeah, the game is really cool. Uh, like I said, you go back and forth with the two to four players. They do a great job with their game. So now we got a tile laying game that looks fantastic on the Infinity game table. Uh, I know a lot of people love their tile laying games. We got things like... Uh, Carcassonne and stuff like that in the board game world that you're, you know, tile laying games and stuff like that. Of course, this is a little bit more simple. There's not as many advanced things going on in the game. It is a simple tile laying game, but it is a fun tile laying game that still has strategy involved on where you actually want to play your pieces if you want to start a new line and stuff like that and try to maximize your points that you have throughout the game. So this is a great addition to the Infinity Game Table. Like I said, it may not be a real board game in the sense that it's not Carcassonne or games that we know by name, but these guys at Squiggly Studios are bringing us those games, you know, with their own spin and twists that still give us the same flavor of those games that are still fantastic on this table. And like I said, I think they're the, they're holding down the Infinity Game Table right now when their releases come out because uh, there ha I, the other reason I haven't done a lot of videos over the last few months is there hasn't been that much to actually be worthy to talk about. You know, they've released a few, like, apps for kids and stuff like that but of course that's not anything we care about i'm still waiting for them to release something big but i don't know if that's going to happen at this point like i would love to see Catan and stuff like that on here i think they know a lot of people would want that on here um but you know it doesn't seem like that's something that they're able to do or they want to do but getting big board games like that that are sitting at target and stuff will attract way more people to this table uh but at least we have some third-party studios that are still giving us fun games even if it's not by name that we all know uh, this is Jeopardy. Obviously, this is a big a big name in their in their line of you know everyone knows what Jeopardy is, and this is obviously something that they did. You got your high scores and your and your save games there, but uh, and you can play either solo by yourself or a two to three player classic. Uh, we're gonna just show you real quick what this looks like. Uh, you can select the style. You can do written responses, um, as you can see here, and you can confirm and your name and stuff like that. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and type whatever right now. It doesn't really matter. And then we can go ahead and hit start game. And then you play the game of Jeopardy exactly how you would expect it to. You can select a clue when it's your turn. Let's say I do 600 and then anybody can buzz in. This word can mean the act of putting in an air conditioner at the military base or the base itself. Now I'm terrible at trivia games, so I'm not even going to try to attempt to tell you what this is. Um, but you obviously have a timer for those two people to buzz in. And then on this one, you can get hit continue if no one ever got it. And then, you know, you have to select another clue. Um, you know, 
whatever the case may be. And you have all these different categories uh, depending. He's hosted Family Feud, Miss Universe, and his own talk show. I actually know this one, uh, but um, hold on. What's his name? This is terrible. Like I said, I'm terrible at trivia games. That's why I don't really play a lot of them. And th the buzz already ran out, so you have to buzz. So you can see it was Steve Harvey. I don't know why I couldn't think of his name. This is the problem. Like I'm terrible at trivia games because I can't think on the spot. Even more so when we're making videos like this. Uh, but if you go back to the main menu here, um, you can also um, do the solo as well, like you guys saw. So that's that's the way that you can do two to three players, which is cool. Then you got your time trials, and you could do written responses or multiple choice. Let's go ahead and do multiple choice this time. Uh, and if I just type in myself here, because I'm playing solo, we can go ahead and hit start. And then you'll be doing the same thing, so that you'll, you'll be trying to get a high score, essentially. Things we say for 200, and interaction... An interjection meeting nonsense. It was often used by uh, Scrooge. Um, so I'm assuming this is going to give me multiple choice. There you go. We got that one correct. Then we can go ahead and hit continue. And again, you're just uh, you know doing these, and, and they have I believe over five thousand questions is what it is on this. So they have a ton of different questions. You're not going to run out anytime soon. A familiar phrase. It's what people. Don't like added to injury. I wasn't paying attention. But you guys get the idea. This is Jeopardy. You're you're trying to play this in five minutes and get as many points as possible trying to get that high score. Uh, so it is a cool game uh, in and of itself. I just think we already have a lot of trivia games on here. Uh, so to me, it's like, oh, it's Jeopardy, yes. And, and, and Jeopardy is obviously a slightly different twist than regular trivia games. But at the end of the day, it is still a trivia game. Uh, I wish we had, you know, I wish they had something else instead. Like, actually, they just released, oh, we're going to take a look at this one now, Trivia for Dummies, uh, which is a game that uh, is also a trivia game. Uh, this one also has, this one says it has over 6,500 questions. So you can go ahead, and actually, this is the one that had a lot of questions. This is the 6,500 one. I actually don't know how many questions Jeopardy has uh, in there, in there, but... You know, like I said, there's just a lot of trivia games coming out on this thing. Uh, I don't think we need any more. I think we need more variety of re either real board games or more board games uh, reminiscent of other board games. But uh, this is Trivia for Dummies. Obviously, Trivia for Dummies is a brand, though. People, you know, the Dummies brand for for um, for this stuff is obviously recognizable when you buy their books and stuff like that. Uh, so it's not like we don't know what that is. And this one lets you play up to four players. So we're just going to go ahead and hit four players so we can see what it looks like. And you can see round one for dummies. Get ready. Player one, answer the following three questions. Uh, so, general knowledge is my first one. I'm probably going to be terrible, as I just talked about. What is the what is the name for the smaller version of the Amazon Echo? Oh, we're, we're dotting with that one. All right. Am I supposed to do something else? Oh, you got to hit the timer and stop it. Oops. Uh, what is the name? All right, general knowledge. We're going to go to the second one here. Which word means the same as clothing or attire? All right, there we go. Some stupid questions that I actually know. Trivia for dummies, that's hilarious. This is definitely my trivia game, apparently. We're two for two. Uh, which three numbers denote that a web page can't be found? Uh, boom. Come on, now. We're three for three, all right. And then player two goes and they answer their following questions and then you can see that you're actually, after 36 rounds of doing this back and forth or 36 questions, you'll see, you know, which one is going to be, uh, you know, is going to be the winner. So it is a basic trivia game that you can play with up to four players. It does have a lot of questions, but again, it's still just a trivia game and I've seen a few of these already on the table we've talked about in the past, not counting the two that we talked about today. So I do hope that they have other things coming. Like I said, the reason that I like this table so much is because there's still a lot of fun games that exist on here that uh, you know are really fun to play. I've talked about them. I've made top 20 list on this for last year. Um, so you know, if you guys want to see those videos, they're there and they're fun to play. Um, so it's not like there's not any games on here, but this year has been a little bit of a slowly year in my opinion. Uh, yes, Jeopardy is a big name, but you know it's just another trivia game in my eyes. Um, luckily we have Squiggly Frog Studio still releasing fantastic games like Stack and Gremlins Grotto that we just talked about. And, uh, you know, hope, I can't wait to see their two other games that you guys saw coming up, but I really hope that Arcade 1UP has other games that are coming up on this thing that are kind of big in, in, in name, but are more board gamey, I guess is the way to put it. Cause like I said, you can't knock them for making Jeopardy cause it is a big game. It is a big name. Uh, I just... You know, like I said, it's just trivia at the end of the day. I want more board game board games on here. I'd be ecstatic if we saw Catan and stuff like that coming on here. 
Um, but we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll see if they have a big new, a big release before the end of the year or not. And uh, see where that goes from there. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video on some of the uh, on the latest releases that we have here to talk about uh, from the Infinity Game Table. You can see some of the ones that we didn't talk about today that I was alluding to is that they had like these kids games that they released and stuff. But of course, I don't have those because those are for kids and there's no kids in this house. So it didn't make any sense. But uh, there is other stuff that you can play on here. There is a lot of fun games from before that have come out. But hopefully they have a couple of really good games coming out before the end of the year. But we'll see where that goes. Uh, you know, by the end of this year. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys for watching, as always. Until next time.